And that was our UWC choir singing songs of Africa. And I want to formally and officially welcome you to second day of another very interesting session that we're going to have today, which is day two. We have about 56 people online now. I'm asked by our marketing department from SAA to ask the participants who are able to, they want to take a screenshot of the Zoom session that can you please, before we start, open up your cameras. So it means you need to quickly rush to the bathroom. I'm gonna give you two minutes. Quickly rush to the bathroom, put on makeup, brush up your hair, put it nicely. Like you see me, I've got my makeup on and my red lip, lips, you see? So I'm giving you that two minutes to do that, to look as beautiful like me. Let me fix myself. Lisa, please don't start now. I'm still fixing myself. I'm still fixing, fixing. <laughs> I'm ready. You <laughs> I'm look ready. beautiful. <laughs> uh, Lisa, you will let me know eh, when you are ready. Uh, and Takalani, oh, we do have Lisa and Takalani um, are responsible for marketing. They will be... Uh, asking some of you to do a short video to uh, give some feedback in terms of your experiences over the last two days. So if you receive any emails from them or any requests via the chat, please don't be, don't refuse, don't be shy like me. <laughs> Thanks. Morning, Doris. Yeah, thanks, uh, Elizabeth. Morning. I think we need to do a, a screenshot if everybody's ready. Um, Takalani, can you just confirm that you can see everyone on your screen? I'm just missing a few people. Okay, some people might not have their camera working. Or some people are still busy fixing their environment. <laughs> Let's give them another one more minute. It's fine. Mukundi, you're robbing us, eh? Despite you inspiring us first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the camera is not working. That's fine. Takalani, I think we are ready. Okay, thank you. I'm going to take two screenshots because I have two screens. Um, there are two screens of the gallery view. So Lisa, if you could just... Camera is off. Whose camera is off? Lisa. Oh, okay. Oh, I think Lisa's using her phone. Um, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Hi, Lisa. <laughs> All right. Um, just smile for a good 10 seconds so that I can get the full screenshot. <laughs> Thank you very much, colleagues. I forgot my lipstick. <laughs> Kevin, sorry. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So I can, I can, I can have you. I can take you to a war, and you will come with me. So I'm, I'm good. I'm good with. You. Yes, 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 yes. I can see that. Um, Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, some beautiful people in the room. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh. So today's program is actually very short, um, but it's going to be very enriching. I hope everyone, or oh, I can see our presenters are here. Um, let me share again my screen. I hope I'm sharing the right one. Um, 
Yes, so welcome to our second day uh, of the program. We are at the opening and welcoming. And uh, like I said, uh, Ms. Legena, because she's gonna kill me if I don't pronounce her name correctly this time around, Ms. Legena on the year with us to this morning. Uh, so she asked that we just welcome me and open today's day two. Um, later on, we will have a launch of the Lena Analytics Special Interest Group. I hope everyone can join in in the discussion as well. Um, and also sign up to participate in that Lena Analytics workshop. And then we have two workshops from our South African universities, one from University of Free State and the other one is from University of Pretoria. But with University of Free State person, uh, but because uh, he's studying at UP, so they will be discussing about the data analytics project that they are working on so that everybody also is aware. So we know that yesterday we had a wonderful, wonderful day one, which was successful. And it was successful, successful because of each and every one of you who is here, because of your participation as well. But as maybe, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, even though I didn't know what to uh, uh, Please remember to mute yourself as well, polite. Um, it was successful because of your full participation. I was in awe because you stayed up until the last minute. So you stayed for almost seven and a half hours online. And that I applaud you. Um, and also I appreciate all of you because without you, it wouldn't be a successful day one. And I hope also day two will be as successful as day one. We've learned from the, um, the, the facilitators and the speakers of that day and they delivered. Wow. They laid it out there. They didn't leave anything not touched. Um, we, from the morning when we, we, we had an introduction from Mr. Pogpas as well, he left us with some few questions that we needed to ask, ask ourselves. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to mention the two. Are we collecting and curating enough data to support the learner analytics work that we're doing or we want to do? Um, also, he mentioned um, something to the fact that are we investing in infrastructure uh, to support the learner analytics work? And from hearing from the facilitators yesterday, um, those two questions, I'm still scrabbling to think uh, in terms of UWC, where we are in the landscape of learner analytics, are we there yet? Or are we still trying to figure out some of these things as well? Um, and Prof. Divet uh, didn't even also like hold back when he addressed us on the, there is a student behind the data. He spoke about some very interesting thing to say. Um, the more we know, is the more we become aware that we don't know. And it was clearly, 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 clearly demonstrated by the facilitators of the three, um, the three workshops that we had yesterday, um, where also um, from the first workshop, um, from what I took away from, from that workshop is that um, we need to always go back to the basic and make sure when we plan and deliver on the learner analytics, we need to make sure that we think of the, the, the life cycle. We need to think about the theory, the design, and then the, the technique or the, the, the data science behind it. We should not only focus on one aspect of, um, of the, the development. We need to think about all those three aspects as well. And also, yeah. what touched me the most is that um, when we when we start working with learner analytics, are we asking the right questions? Are we um, delivering on the right metrics that will support or enhance the learning um, as well? Because learner analytics is more about enhancing the learning, but more especially um, what she said was, it's not even about the technology and the tools, it's about the people and which also clearly shows that they, this is a line with what Prof. Devet was saying in the morning as well. Um, moving on to the second um, 
uh, workshop where we had a, a, a Rogers speak to us about the dashboard, how we developing the dashboard. And what I take away from there is stakeholder involvement. If you leave people behind and not bring them to the core, you will develop solutions that are not with um, uh, uh, people using. So uh, well, uh, you are developing a, 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 a tool that people might not even adopt and use. So if you bring the stakeholders in the discussion while you are developing, um, especially, and I think it's, it talks to us in, I, in IR space and also in, in technical spaces, in those who are dealing with the data that sometimes we develop because we are in our mind, we're thinking about the solutions that we want to, to build, but we, we never consider the user or the person that we're building that solution for. And that summed up nicely to say, when you are developing something, bring the person you are developing that something for or the solution for along with them. And I think also Prof, uh, sorry, someone's mic is still on. Um, and then Prof ranges sealed it off in terms of the adoption of learner analytics. And it clearly shows that if you have your stakeholders, you have your faculties, your lecturers on board, it can be achieved. And we need to always consider that. Um, and also we always need, when we develop uh, these solutions, we always, especially when it, we talk to learner analytics, we need to bring the pedagogy and the IT together and not do them separately. Otherwise we will be developing solution in silos. And I hope today's, uh, which is day two, the two workshop will demonstrate in terms of our South African context as well for the first workshop where they speak about the develop or mapping of the student life cycle. Um, they will demonstrate what the stakeholder engagement looks like and what are the, the processes and frameworks that they use. And then when we go into the fifth workshop, which will be presented by Hercules, um, I, I'm hoping they will tell us if not using what we have in our own institution, are there any other data sources that we need to be considering? Are we looking, are we, are we, are we wearing work gloves when we work in, with the data that we have in our universities or are we opening up and looking at the rear view mirrors to look at more other data to bring in, in order to support decision-making? And that is the purpose of the learner analytics, going back to the basics. And I hope you're going to enjoy day two. Let's see how far am I in terms of time because I'm doing both. So, and that concludes the introduction and welcome for today. I need to just check, just give me two seconds. I need to check Prof. Um, Prince Law, are you here? I'm here, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much because now we're moving into our second part, which is the launch of the SAA Learner Analytics. Ashton, not Ashton Dunya, but Ashton from SAA, are you here? Ashton Meheri. Um, Karen, can you please check if Ashton can join the session? Yes, okay. Thank you. Um, then let's go to the launch. Sorry, Elizabeth, uh, he is here. I see his name on the list. Hi, um, yes, I'm here. There he is, okay. <laughs> oh, Ashton, don't give me a heart attack because I thought- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So just give me a second. I'm going to open a, the PowerPoint slide that I prepared. There are so many of them. I need to find the right one. Apologies, today is one of those days. 
that on day one, everything was going according to plan and then jiggy jiggy, things happen. Okay, so we move on to our second. Um, what I forgot to mention as well, I hope my media people don't kill me. Please join our conversation or join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. And those are the Twitter handle and Facebook handle. I will also, I will display them a little bit later as well. So you can have them. So take screenshots and say how the day is going there. Um, holla at us and the Twitter handle and Facebook handle is hashtag SAA. LAW 2022. So the agenda will be as follows. Um, we'll have the introduction. Um, I'm just going to give you um, an intro. And I think my ESCO members, uh, like I said, I've co-opted myself into the ESCO. I'm joking. They co-opted me into the, S the, the SAA ESCO to run the NENA Analytics Institute. Um, so if they are here, they will help me also to refresh my, mem my memory if I'm doing something wrong. And then Ashton will take you through the website that we just updated. And I'm going to hand over to uh, Paul Prislow and Rogers to speak about the Society of Learning Analytics and Africa chapter uh, special interest group that they are initiating with the SOLAR group as well. So. Uh, where do we come in in terms of this SAA LA SIG? Um, in May 2019 uh, at UNISA, when we hosted the Lena Analytic Institute, the group that were there in attendance decided that we need to form the Lena Analytic Special Group and the, um, they decided that the goal of that interest group will be to increase the capacity and capabilities of people and practitioners, especially members of SAA at conferences in relating to the learner analytics space. Also to participate in the national and regional international learning analytics events, such as the LAC, which is the conference that is hosted by SOLA. And I think Paul Prinslow can elaborate more on that since he has been um, participating in that for a very long time. And also uh, we need to also participate as an African chapter, uh, participate in the African chapter of the Solar Analy Lena Analytics uh, Special Interest Group that pr uh, Professor Prislow will speak about just now. And everything changed when COVID-19 happened. Um, so we didn't have, the SAA Lena Analytic Institute in 2020 because of that. And then in 2021, we hosted one online, but we didn't discuss anything about the, um, the special interest group. So in March or April, somewhere around that of 2021, the ESCO uh, co-opted me onto their ESCO to run the Lena Analytics. Um, institute and on at that moment then I asked them can we revive the initiative that started in in, in um, at UNISA and in April or May of 2021 I might get the dates wrong we had a meeting where I, I invited the ex-presidents and people who have been in the SAS space for a very long time just to have an understanding in terms of do we still need this? Will it benefit the members of SAA? So the people that were involved in that discussion initially were um, John Claude Lemons from University of Pretoria, uh, Paul Prinslow from UNISA, Angelo Finn from UNISA, and Elizabeth Archer from UWC, Glenn Barnes from IDSC. And we received an apology from a policy who was then at VET and Jan Hendrik from Northwest University. And majority of the people, or actually not majority, everyone who was at that meeting decided that this is a very important area that we should not neglect. We should formalize it. And starting with um, having someone at the conference in the um, November, in November, 2021. So we invited George Siemens to come and offer a learner analytics uh, workshop at the conference and from there, we decided that this is no, there are no turning backs. 
So we came up with some of the objectives of that um, special interest group, which one of them is to um, is to allow SAA to host the repository to assist in terms of resources relating to learning analytics. We also needed to establish a database of people who we can always ask if we need people to offer workshops in uh, with regards to learning analytics or who have material or who are publishing in this space that they can share that information with our members as well. Um, we also needed to build the capacity and the capability in terms of literacies in general, including literacies in terms of data literacy, learner analytics, learning analytics, and so forth. And we also wanted to, because one of the mandate in terms of SAA is to have our own journal. We said um, this will be one way where we can contribute in terms of making sure that we encourage in the, uh, our members to contribute to having research outputs in this special area, uh, which is the learning analytics um, area. And also um, one of the strategic uh, uh, goal of SAA this year, uh, or in the these two years for this ESCO was to build more partnership and encourage um, uh, more people or more, more other professional bodies to be part or either to engage with them or collaborate with them in terms of um, some of the programs that we have. And we, um, uh, that is the reason why we also thought of the solar as one of those partners. So we want to encourage um, collaboration and sharing of best practices and usages of learner analytics. And that's the reason why we had those three international people coming in as well, sharing with us in terms of what learn learning analytics is so that we can capacitate ourselves and um, uh, learn more about this area. And I'm going to hand over to um, Aston to show you the website that we have and where you can sign up if you are interested. Thank you, Ashton. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Um, and I hope you can hear me and see me. Great, let me just share my screen. So if you navigate to the website and I'll just put the link in the chat again for the SAA website. Um, so if you navigate to the website, we have the special interest group sitting in the menu, in the top menu, the navigation menu on the top. And if you click it, you can click it. And you can click the learning analytics special interest group over there, or you can select it from the drop down menu. And here you'll see some of the resources that have been made available. Um, a bit of a background on the learning analytics special interest group. Um, what are the strategic goals, the objectives, some of the recommended resources that have already been made available to you, and then the related associations uh, that you can also have a look at in terms of navigating. So all of these links are clickable, so you would be able to click on it and view the reports that have been shared, the links that have been shared, so we've tried to make it nice uh, and easy to navigate. But the most important part is the signing up to the special uh, interest group for the learning analytics. And you should see this on the right hand, yes, on the right hand side. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, please signing up now to the learning analytics special interest group. Um, completed with your title, your first name, your surname, your position title at your institution, your institution name, and then the email address that you will be using for correspondence. This is a separate database uh, for the special interest group. So we won't be 
sending this to our normal newsletter community. So if you are interested in this, please sign up. And then we would like you to select um, or indicate areas of learner learning analytics that you would like to contribute to. So number one, we've got learning analytics framework and methodology, whether you would like to participate in that. The uh, number two is the learning analytics use, user case. Uh, the third one is the learning analytics ethics and privacy. And the fourth one then is learning analytics drivers, developments and challenges. So you can go and select as many as you are interested in um, or select one or two or all of them. So this will help with the database and for regular communication then around the learning analytics special interest group. So please go in, subscribe, fill out the form. At the moment, we only have around seven people who've gone in and subscribed and signed up to be part of the learning analytics special interest group. So please go ahead, Use the little bit of time that we've got at the moment, complete your details and click submit uh, so that you don't miss out. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. Um, thank you, uh, Ashton, for that. Um, as Ashton is our web developer. Um, and thank you for the great work that you did for us on there. Um, I'm going to hand over to Prof. The floor is yours. You are able to share your screen if you have a presentation as well. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth, and good morning, colleagues. Um, that was that was stunning, Ashton. I'm I'm very very excited about the possibilities. I'm going to share my screen. Rogers and I just prepared a short overview to help uh, <clears throat> to give us direction in 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 presenting you uh, with some some introduction to to where I think the SIG can fit into the work of the Society of Learning Analytics. I don't need to tell you where it all started. <clears throat> Interesting, in our research, we found that there were articles published with regard to learning analytics and actually used the phrase learning analytics, uh, say from 2008-9, and uh, even issues with regard to uh, privacy and ethics of that. But it all actually started as LUC 11 hosted in Canada, and that is one of the, or that's the earliest definition of learning analytics, and it, it continues to be referred and sort of used as a basis. So that's where it all started. And then if, if we think of uh, where, we, where it came from and where we are currently, <clears throat> one of the mother, mother disciplines or mother practices from which learning analytics arose and to which it continued to be linked is educational data mining. And from my understanding and many others' understanding of, of educational data mining and learning analytics, the, the terms are often used interchangeably, but they are distinct in focus. Um, they focus on different things. They add different value. They have often different methodologies and outcomes. And then Rogers and I, in a recent article, um, quote uh, Jean-Claude Lemons and Hen and, and Prof. Boerta and, and um, Villette that says the history of institutional research on the sub-Saharan Africa shows the dominance of, of educational data mining and the fairly recent emergence of learning analytics as a specific research focus and practice within the broader context of institutional research. And as Elizabeth has indicated that learning analytics has for quite a long time been part of this umbrella of institutional research. But I think this special interest group will help us to say, okay, not only how is learning analytics different, but what is the unique um, contribution that learning analytics can make to this field. Uh, last night, as I prepared for this presentation, I just looked on the, the, the how these terms reflected on Google Trends. And you can see from February 2011 and in 2018, learning analytics arose in prominence while educational data mining is this baseline. Uh, but then most properly 
of interest when when I did the search for South Africa. Uh, there's on Google Trends. There's no no not enough data to show you, and that points to something. Uh, this year with the Learning Analytics and Knowledge Conference, um, this was the six uh, uh, people from from South Africa that attended. You will see their gender, their roles, where they are located, and their positions. So since luck rose to prominence in 2011, 11 years later, uh, this is the, the representation from South Africa then uh, at the Learning Analytics and Knowledge Conference. And this, this says something that the field is still very, very much emerging as a research focus and possibly even as a practice. So uh, the, one of the implications is that, that since 2011, most of our understanding of student data and learning analytics are shaped by the global north. Um, and in, in the broader context of African epistemologies, African ways of making sense of the world and of privacy and student data and of learning, we have, we have to consider what are the implications of this and how can we put learning analytics in the global south on the map? And how can we change the narrative? How can we add value? And, and from Rogers and my perspective, there, there's, there's two possibilities. Of the, the first is joining the Society of Learning Analytics Research and then becoming part of this SIS. Uh, we are very, very excited about that and then possibly to find a link to become part of a broader African learning analytic network or the chapter of SOLAR that Elizabeth referred to. Just shortly, so the Society of Learning Analytics have been in existence since 2011. Uh, and uh, Rogers have been the student representative since um, I think two years ago. And Sola and I've been elected onto the executive um, the beginning of the year. So I'm very, very impressed with what they do, how they do things. And I really, really uh, think it is a, a very, very important society to, to consider when you consider uh, membership. So that's just the overall mayor mission of Sola, the highest standards of academic research, the Learning Analytics and Knowledge Conference has only, uh, I think, a 25 to 27 percent accept acceptance rate. The Journal of Learning Analytics only uh, has a 25 percent acceptance rate. So the standard is extremely high. For South African researchers, it's also important to note that the Journal of Learning Analytics has never been up to 2021, never been part of the Scopus and the Department of Higher Education list, but since 2021, it is there. So if you publish in the Journal of Learning Analytics, you will be accredited. So the second goal is, or mission is to create opportunities for diverse stakeholders, uh, to communicate, collaborate, to promote the development of open educational resources and to raise uh, awareness of learning analytics. Um, so the goals of SOLAR for up to the end of this year is to increase the diversity and inclusivity of the SOLAR community. And, and colleagues, I must confess that it's a very, very dedicated effort to ensure uh, gender representativity, uh, uh, ensuring uh, geopolitical and institutional representativity. Uh, so it, it is really of concern that the, that solar only has a footprint in the global north at the moment. Expand impact and increase understanding and use of learning analytics, communicate the value of membership and increase overall engagement. So that's just the goals. Then if the fees, um, my institution, UNISA is not an institutional member. So, so for an individual member, it was hundred US dollars this year. So I joined as an individual member um, the, at UNISA, and I don't know what the possibility are, about possibilities are at other institutions. My department has um, a fund for, for society memberships. 
so I was able to recover the the amount from that fund and I would really suggest that you consider to to join solar as an individual member if you can recoup that money from your institution student membership there it is and then currently there's no African higher education institution that is member of solar and that is possibly of a concern it's not strange in the sense of the, the low emergence or the emerging nature of learning analytics in South Africa. But I really, really think that institutional membership is of crucial concern for the future. So, and I'm wrapping up before Rogers joins me in the conversation. So I do think there's a huge possibility and I want to congratulate Elizabeth and Ashton on this initiative that we form a an interest group under the auspices of SAA to consider what are the issues, what are the research opportunities and for collaboration in the South African context. Rogers and I have been collaborating since 2021. Uh, we were very, very fortunate to have two articles so far accepted. The, the first one was a, a scoping review where we tried to map learning analysis on the African continent. Uh, and hopefully that will be out in uh, out within the next month. And only last week we got news that our article data privacy on the African continent opportunities, challenges and implications have been accepted in the British Journal of Educational Technology. So we're very excited about that one. And we're busy with a fascinating research on, on privacy and consent. It's a qualitative uh, study. And so far, we've uh, we've done twelve interviews with scholars from Kenya, Rwanda, Egypt, Nigeria, um, Ghana, Botswana, and South Africa, just to say. But how does Africans or how do individuals on the African continent understand privacy and consent, and what are the implications for learning analytics? So that is what Rogers and I are doing. So we're establishing this network. It's still in its early stages of of scholars on the African continent that are publishing in the field of learning analytics or has an interest. And uh, we're building up a database and we will share that database with the SIC of SAA. And hopefully we can get an African footprint and at the next e executive meeting of SOLA, Rogers and I would like to, to propose to SOLA for an African chapter or African SIC for under the solar umbrella for Africa. So that's from my side. Um, Rogers has been in, a, in another meeting. I'm not sure whether he's been able to join us so far. So that is just our contact details. If you want to reach out to us, Rogers, um, you're welcome to add anything that I maybe has left, have left out. Rogers, can you join the conversation? Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Paul, and uh, thanks to each and everyone who is participating in a meeting. I think I'll, that was a very uh, great uh, summary, and I think just to add one thing about like the the value of, of uh, like creating this kind of uh, special interest group for the African uh, researchers uh, interested in analytics is I think it gives us a better or stronger voice in the in the community, and also being able to leverage on the different opportunities and getting to know what's actually happening. Like currently there, there are new, like there is a recent fund uh, from solar uh, that, that's, uh, that's funding like early career researchers uh, interested in uh, having a, a learning analytics project. So, and there are also a couple of other things that usually come in, but if we have the kind of a database of members, then it's very easy to distribute such kind of uh, opportunities and then encourage members to actually apply and then because things from there we can apply for we can have like um, projects uh, that we can work as a group. this is an initiative from the South African group and I look forward to see how we can actually work together uh, to create also I mean, when we create one for Seoul, I think, and then there is already members in the South African, and then it's very easy to actually uh, combine efforts and see how best to push this together. So that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Rogers. Um, and just add, adding to what Rogers has contributed, so there's this research fund under solar. I will share the link just now. And there's solar also makes a number of scholarships available for the Learning Analytics and Knowledge Conference. Uh, that is the annual conference. So the next conference is planned for Japan. Uh, there are possibly some changes because of the re restrictions on COVID for Japan, but the conference itself will go ahead and most probably as a hybrid somewhere. So uh, the dates will be published soon. I don't know whether there's any questions for Rogers or for myself, Elizabeth Ashton. Um, I'm going to open it up for everyone on the floor. If you have any question, I see here um, Prof. Uh, uh, Sethi says one of those people you referred to is her. Oh, <laughs> uh, they attended the, the lake 2022. I'm glad that she's here as well. Um, anyone who has a question for either the executive of SAA or for Sola or um, for Paul Prinslow and, and Rogers. Any comments? Any yay, cheering? <laughs> okay. Oh, there are some cheerings. Thank you, Ashton. You feeling me? Um, Yes, yes, we're cheering. We're cheering very much from our <laughs> from the background here. Thank you very much to both Prof, Prof uh, Prince Lu and to Rogers. Thank you very much. Very invaluable contributions. Oh, and I see my president is here also. <laughs> yes, um, um, policy. You can unmute. <laughs> much colleagues for for that insightful presentation. Uh, I know that I've joined uh, a, a bit late, but mm -hmm. uh, so this is. I must say that uh, uh, Prof. Prinslow and, and Rogers and, and colleagues, this is one of uh, the strategic uh, I, items that have been put as, 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 as critical for SAA. And we are so much grateful that uh, Elizabeth and, and the other SAA exco, they are pushing it. You are correct in terms of uh, building capacity building networks, especially within the African continent, so that then we're able to tell our own story and be able to create our own capacity. I think that is very uh, important. And what then I would also appeal to colleagues is they should join uh, this SIG because we really need, uh, you know, active participants, you know, fresh ideas, collaborations across institutions on how we can then be able, you know, to not only lay a foundation, but make sure that the work get some momentum going forward. And I think already uh, in you as, as, as the leading experts internationally, I think uh, we are going to heavily rely on you in terms of just providing us overall guidance. But yeah, I think overall, I'm, I'm so excited about this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Policy. Um, are there any other comments or questions? And yes, oh, thank you, Pro, uh, Paul and, and Rogers for a short presentation that you, you did with us. And I, I only hope that this will grow from now, from now on. I, and I know that um, Prof, you, you did a very, like you, you did, you championed this work in South Africa for a very, very long time. Um, it's only for us to, to appreciate and and take the bait and, and and run with it as well and also to to go back to you every time when we have some questions and all that and I appreciate that you're still here and you are still doing what you are doing best and thank you Rogers for being with us again as well for two days as well for sharing yesterday and also for for being part of this and also for advocating for this to be part of um, for, for advocating for an African um, uh, learner analytics network as well in, in Africa. We need this. We need to, to work with our, our other counterparts, in, um, uh, universities collaborate in Africa so that we can build um, this network. Um, if there are no other questions or comments, I am 
going to close off this session. And I think we are right on time. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, the program. We are supposed to finish at 11.40. So yeah, we are right on time and it is break time well, for 10 minutes. Oh. We were supposed to finish at 10 o'clock. So we are 10 minutes ahead of time. Um, so the next workshop will start. I'm not even sharing my screen so you don't see what I'm looking at as well. Sorry, like I said, I'm going to apologize so many times today because things are not going the way I, I, I've planned. So we were supposed to finish at 10 o'clock. Um, so we're going to have a 10 minutes break and then we'll, oh, actually it will be 20 minutes now. Um, unless we can start early. Sivile uh, and Anna Marie, are you here? Can we start at 10? Then you will have more time. 10 o'clock is perfect. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Okay, thank you. Then we will start at 10. Um, and enjoy your, go refill your coffees, get some water. I will play again the same song we just listened to, the African oh, song for Africa by our University of South Africa. And enjoy the music. Thank you. Sound of Africa. Thank <laughs> you. 